in the last class we had discussed about uh, how uh, you should design a layout in android okay in today's class what i'm going to do is i'm going to slowly uh, enter into the realm of uh, programming okay but before we go to that there are a few things which i wanted to know from you guys uh, whether you are aware of those things then we will proceed is what i i thought okay so um, before i go to the coding part of this okay uh, let me ask you a few questions about uh, java okay while writing java code there will be some rules given by the uh, person who taught you java or when you learnt it online okay uh, whenever they talk about uh, java there will be some rules given i want you guys to tell me whatever rules you remember when you write a java program <clears throat> normally we decide some rules before we start writing java program now i want you guys to tell me what are the rules to be followed while writing a java program let me just quickly summarize what and all you guys have told me so far i hope there is nothing much uh, you remember but uh, let us recollect a few rules which uh, which we need to remember when we are writing uh, java code okay so first thing okay uh, what some of you have told this already in the uh, group but anyway let me just repeat some highlights of the rules which are available before i proceed with that there are certain things called as rules and there are certain things called as guidelines okay please note uh, there are there is a huge difference between them for example the answers what you guys gave in that there is rules okay uh, there are also guidelines given okay like for example uh, in order to use the class name starts with an upper case letter no compulsion it's a guideline it's not a rule okay code should be written inside a class that's not a guideline that's a rule all java code should be inside a class you cannot write uh, your logic or the code outside a class everything should be inside a class that's the rule of an object oriented programming language okay so class names uh, that one main method is necessary to execute a program all right so uh, i'll just modify that word uh, what brijal has told but main method is ex necessary to execute a program in core java those who have done servlet i think last semester most of you have done servlets uh and some of you had done swing and all those things okay but in especially in servlet you do not see a main method there is no main method in that okay but there is an entry point okay there is a method which acts like the main method so basically there should be an entry point to the program majority of the program entry point is the main method so main method should be the entry point okay uh mohit said its main must I mean, my main function must be there yes of course the same thing okay should document the program as much as possible that is not a rule it's a guideline okay that's a guideline next identifiers are case sensitive now that's not a guideline but that is something which is an information which you should need to remember when you name a variable okay it is case sensitive so if i uh, create a variable with a small letter you have to call it with that sm same small letter okay so identifiers are uh, case sensitive camel case variable names or uh, variables camel case again is a guideline okay it is not compulsory for you to use that it is still a guideline it is not a rule all right but normally we prefer you use that that's a guideline main function must be the last method in the program again this is not the uh, it's not a compulsion okay it's a guideline for you guys to understand that the main method will be written last but it will be called first all right so wherever you write the main method doesn't make a difference how you write the methods here does not make a difference rather how you call it makes a difference okay so those who have worked with core java you know that i write the main method at the top middle bottom wherever i write main method will be the first one to be called from the main method all other methods will be called okay remember that so that is one and uh, shouldn't be keywords that's not a guideline that's a rule you cannot use uh, for example creating an int called as string i'll write int space string semicolon that's not possible because string is a keyword you cannot create a keyword as a variable all right so remember that and uh, should have a open close bracket that's a syntax that's not a guideline that's a rule when you open a bracket you should close the bracket and everything which belongs to that should be inside that open and close bracket and uh, next one what you guys told was file name and class name should be the same okay this rule is very important for me but also i'll twist it a little bit file name should be equal to the class name which has the main method okay please remember in java you can write two or three classes in the same file in the same dot java file i can create two or three classes the rule here is the class name should be the one which has the file name okay the file name should be the one which has the main method in the class name i hope you guys follow what i said 
all right so the file name must be equal to class name of the one which has main method in it you cannot have two or three classes in the same file java file which has three main methods okay in that case your compilation running will be totally different but when you have a main method in one class let's say class a class b class c is there and i have the main method in class c the file name should be class c on sorry c only all right c dot java that should be the file name please remember that that's a rule not a, a guideline okay leaving two space between each method again that's a guideline not a rule i hope you guys follow this right now <clears throat> these are the basic rules when you write a java code now why are we uh, so much bothered about java here is there is a reason okay what we did in the last class in yesterday's class was just design okay i did not even code anything i just dragged and dropped i put some data i changed some attributes and i got the output very simple but that output will not react because a reaction part or the um, the decision making or the performing action part is is a program it's a logic okay that cannot be taken care by design alone that is where your programming languages come into picture okay so in today's class we will see that in a short uh, term okay but before that you need to understand how your android project works okay so if you know how the project works writing code will be a little bit easier okay so let me just quickly recollect what we had seen in the first class uh, i'll just go to the project structure i'll just zoom in for a second okay just notice this guys <clears throat> I hope you guys can see the screen. So here you see that um, in the folder of app, you have manifest, you have Java, you have resources. Okay, but these, there is two other folder called generated. Okay, I'll not touch them at all for any purposes because they are automatically generated by the IDE. You are not supposed to edit it or modify it. Okay, this is generated by the system itself. Do not touch these two folders. Okay, so I told you a simple uh, thing that all things which ends with dot java the file extension if it is dot java it comes inside the java folder what about the ones which do not have a file extension of dot java all those things comes under resources okay starting with the layout okay layout is nothing but an xml file okay drawable is also the all are xml files basically and you have some uh, core files okay so you have basically xml files everywhere mipmap also will be having xml files these are also xml files colors, strings, all these things are XML files. Now, <clears throat> why does it matter for me to know about all these things? Please remember this. Uh, when it comes to Java, okay, Java has the code that is very simple, but then you take resources. What about this design? The one which you did here in XML, when I run it, will it still be XML? No, that's the, that's the tr truth here. Since you are using Java as the um, development environment here in this particular project, all code should be in Java. That's the normal convention. All code must be in Java or everything should be converted in such a way that Java understands it, not XML, not the other way around. Okay, we are not targeting XML here. We are targeting Java here. XML is just a way for us to understand and develop it easier. Okay, so imagine instead of dragging and dropping a button, a text box and all those things, I have to write code which says button space uh, B1 is equal to new button within brackets passing parameters, then uh, aligning that button in a particular location. It's a very big and tedious task just for doing design. Okay, so since XML is there, it is easy for you to just drag and drop and create a project. Okay, and it makes your code much simpler for the design part. So the coding part alone, no need, uh, need to bother about Java. Remaining people need not bother just designing. You don't even need Java knowledge for designing. Okay, that's why they have kept it separate. But at the end, ultimately, when you run the program, it should be converted back to Java. So uh, why, why should it get converted back to Java? I'll show you shortly. But just think of this logic, guys. Just uh, uh, keep your mind on this and then think. I have put one button or a text box or something here in the design. It is there in XML. How will Java take that uh, button and say, if you click on this button, do this. Okay, so I put a button here in the design. When I click on it, I want something to happen. Okay, so how do I do that? Uh, in order to do that uh, action, I need to tell, I need to bring Java in because XML cannot do that. XML can only show you the structure, the design is shown by XML. But when you click on that button, something should happen, right? That happening part, Java should take care. So there should be an indication or uh, Java should be notified that this button was clicked. How do we do that? 
okay both are not the same guys one is xml a markup language one is java a programming language they both cannot directly communicate with each other just like that all right so how do we how do i communicate then okay so i need to communicate in such a way that uh, java thinks i'm still talking to a java file all right so how do i uh, how do i achieve that convert this xml file to java okay i'll repeat it again since you want java to interact with the design which you are going to do okay uh, you need to make sure that there is a way in which java can talk to the com uh, components or the controls which you have put on the screen so in order to do that what i need to do i need to make sure that java talks to or communicates to these things which i have put in the design how to do that xml cannot directly do that so what uh, your program or android studio will do is it will convert this xml file all xml files here will be generated into or converted into a java file okay and the what will be the name of the java file the java file will be named as simply r capital letter r okay what do you mean by r here resources all resources will be converted into um, a file okay uh, it will be marked or mapped to a java code okay so please remember i'll show that why uh, why i meant that in uh, two minutes okay but just remember this whatever code you have written here in java is the main activity okay the main thing which is happening so what about my design how is my design coming here that also java is taking care okay xml is there only for us humans to design easily and deploy easily okay java is the one which takes care of all your design as well as code but here it shows like uh, xml is taking care of the design yes right now xml is taking care of the design but after i finish my program and i run the program this xml gets converted into a java and stored uh, a java file and stored in a file called as r capital letter r so if i wanted to access layout and inside that i want to access activity underscore mean how will i access it okay just take a simple thing this resource will be converted into a capital letter r layout will be as it is activity underscore mean so it will be r dot layout dot activity underscore mean okay let's see that in working let me just i'll not do anything guys right now i'm only going to explain what is already generated and kept in front of you okay let's go to main activity dot java let's have a small glance of the code okay i want you guys to just look at the code and we'll try to break this down okay make sure that you don't follow uh, or don't continue till you understand what code is written okay never copy code and continue writing that will be a, a problem for you later right now you'll be able to execute all my programs because i'm going to share the code i'm going to share this video you will be able to just copy it but that is not what i want copying can be done by anybody it doesn't require an mca person to do that okay so always think and understand each and every line in your code it will talk to you it will be making sense unless you understand what it is trying to tell you you will not be able to proceed further okay so language makes a very important uh, tool for us to communicate right so if you have written something and your java code is doing something you should also be able to understand why it is doing so and how it is doing so okay let's start with the first line okay look at the first line guys i'll not go too much in depth but just try to understand what that first line is telling you the first line tells package name is com.thomas.hello world okay so for a normal java developer you should by now know what does it mean that just means that this java file is executed or is located inside a folder called com inside that there is a folder called thomas inside that folder there is a folder called hello world and inside that hello world folder this file exists okay <clears throat> remember that it's very important the package name okay it's automatically generated obviously because you can see that the package name is the one which is coming here as a big folder actually it's three folders okay if you want to see that you can see it as uh, i'll just change from android to project structure and then you can easily see where this file is located let me just open it app src uh, main java com dot thomas dot hello world this is the actual structure but your id will show it in a very neat fashion like this so that it is avoiding confusion okay so remember that so i am here in the main activity okay so that's the package where it is leading to me the first line is clear i hope okay second two lines what you see are import statements okay whatever is required by this class is getting imported just like how you have hash include in cc++ okay i'll talk about what has been imported and all those things that is later but please note android studio or any ide for that sake will automatically import what and all you require you just need to guide 
your ID. Okay, it'll automatically import. So this part we need not bother much. Okay, you just need to import basically what is required for, for my app to work with. I'll talk about the imports later when we have clashes in name and clashes in the title. Okay, that time we'll talk about which package to import and all those things we'll talk. Then let's move on. There is no main method here, by the way. Please note that there is no main method anywhere. Uh, you guys told main method is the entry point. It should be there in the program. Main function should be there is what we told. But you see this program, there is no main method. Okay, you should understand that. I'll come to that slowly. But let's take one by one. Public. What do you mean by public? Anybody can access. If I close the main activity as private, your app will not open because it should be public entry. Then later you can restrict which page should be shown, which page should not be shown. But the entry point only if you block, nobody else can enter. I hope you guys follow, right? See, for example, entering into a college cannot be blocked, but entering into a class can be blocked. All right. So entering into the college can be anybody who is looking for admission, anybody who is just visiting somebody in the college, all those things are allowed. So I cannot close the main gate, but I can close the class door. Okay. Library can be blocked for people from outside to access and uh, the classrooms, the labs, they, I can block people from entering, but not the main gate itself. If I close the main gate, there will not be any students here. Okay. So like that. So public entry, then class, everything should be inside a class. That's what your rule says. Everything should be inside a class. And that's why the code is also given like that, except for the package name and the import statements, everything else should be inside the class. Okay. There's a small exception on the top, but anyway, next class name. What is the class name? Same thing as the file name. File name is main activity, capital M, capital A. What is the class name? Main activity, capital M, capital A class name file name should be equal. That rule also is applicable. Okay. Now, uh, can you guys uh, tell me what do you mean by extends? What is extends in uh, Java? What does it mean that word extends mean? And what is it trying to accomplish? Anyone? Extends, displays the super class. Okay. <laughs> uh, what does it do? What is extends concept? What is the concept uh, behind this word called extends? Inheritance. Perfect. All right. So it inherits. Okay. That's what I want you guys to just remember the word. Whenever you see the word extends, just remember the word inheritance. Okay. So when I say main activity extends from something, Okay. Main activity is the child and this is the parent. In other words, main activity inherits from app combat activity. I'll talk about what is activity and uh, all those things in the next class. Okay. But let me just keep this in mind. Okay. Some, some class extends from some other class. Okay. So this is the parent. This is the child. Now there is another important critical question here. How many classes can I inherit from? Right now I've written only one class. Okay. What is the maximum number of classes or mi minimum you can extend one? Okay. What is the maximum number of classes you can extend from in Java? Exactly. Lanston, that's correct. Okay. Extends can be done with only one class. Please remember this guys. Extends can be done with only one class. Java does not support multiple inheritance. Okay. It can allow multiple inheritance only through interfaces. Okay. I'll talk about that later, but then remember this. Okay. Extends app combat activity means this activity extends from uh, one parent class. Okay. And only one, you cannot do anything else. If you want extra, you'll have to use the word implements, not extends. Okay. Please remember that extends can have only one implements can have many. One class can implement many interfaces, but can only extend from one class. Please remember that. I hope you guys remember this, but still I'm just recollecting all these things. Okay. Then inside that first line, they've written as at override. Okay. I hope uh, most of you would have come across this word called overriding. Okay. What is the concept of overriding helping you to do? What is overriding anyone quickly? No one. What is overriding in your own terms? What is overriding in simple terms? 
ignore okay <laughs> replace uh, not just one word guys there should be some meaning why we have put that in uh, override okay so you guys know what is overloading right same method name okay if you put same method name and uh, you give different parameters then it becomes overloading overriding is also a type of polymorphism but then you see there are two classes here i want you guys to notice that we have said two classes main activity is a class extends from another class okay so when i override this is the child this is the parent okay if a method with the same name exists in main activity and app combat activity in other words if a method with the sorry if a method with the same name exists in the child as well as the parent and you want the child's method to execute first child should override it i hope you guys follow that right uh, these and all should be already known to you but i'm just recollecting for people who, are, who wants to just revise okay when you write overriding it means that if the child as well as the parent have the same method name called on create and you want this child to do its own way of uh, working not the parents way okay because every other app every other activity you're going to add is going to come from app combat activity if every app behaves the same way you will not use it of course right but i want some property from the parent but in this case i want my child to do whatever he wants not what the parent wants that's why it's called overriding okay you are overriding the power which is coming from uh, the parent class okay so if you want to see whether that parent class is having also this method yes just hold control on your keyboard and click on that uh, word okay whichever class you are extending from you'll see the code of that okay so here do you have on create yes there is on create inside this file also this class also has on create this class also has on create so if i put override in front of it what does it mean ignore this override sorry this ignore this on create and only use this on create that's what we are saying so that whatever is written here will be executed not what is written here in the parent class will get executed that's all is the idea that's called overriding okay this is just a concept guys you need not bother it will automatically be generated by your id okay keep that in mind moving on inside that there is a protected class nothing is returned there is a method i'll talk about this method in the next class where we uh, where we go in depth about what is an activity okay but most of you would have studied something called life cycle okay every activity or whatever you screen you see has its own uh, life cycle which we will be discussing in the next class okay but i want you to ignore that uh, right now i'll come back to this a little bit later and uh, super i hope you guys know what super super class so i'll not explain much about that okay what is passed what is retrieved all those things i'll take when the life cycle goes into picture okay i want you to just focus on the line number 12 just look at that okay now before i go to the working of it can you tell me what is set content view what is this what i've highlighted what is that in the five keywords which i have given to you guys in the beginning of the class what is that the one which i have highlighted uh, in the first classes we had taken we have spoken about five keywords of object oriented programming okay can you put that into picture and tell me the one which i have highlighted what is it is it a class is it an object what is it <clears throat> what happened guys okay no response method perfect okay so why did we say it's a method okay there are number of reasons uh, to identify something as a method number one okay um, the bracket the bracket around it normally indicates that it is a method okay please remember that first first indication second indication is it should be an action set content view set something do something okay which means it's an action should be a method okay that's one next one camel case first letter full small second word first letter capital third word first letter capital that's again a method names convention 
class names do not follow that convention class names start with a capital letter the next word again starts with a capital letter same example app compact activity okay this is a method name on create so on full small letter next word first letter capital i hope you guys follow all right so that is what is happening here now inside that set the contents view as whatever you get from r dot layout dot activity underscore main what is this r okay uh, this r is nothing but the one i told you the generated resource file that's the java file guys okay it is not um, a regular uh, xml now when i'm calling it here you can see the one which i have uh, just move your mouse over that you will tell you that public final class com dot thomas dot hello world dot r okay that r is the class name here and inside that r you have a, a class or a, another subclass called as layout and inside that there is a property okay there is a public static final int this just a um, every resource in android please remember this guys i'm repeating it again i'll pause for a while i want you guys to remember this every resource in android will be given a unique id a unique integer id will be given to every resource which comes from a uh, resources folder in android studio you should know why also okay here i have lot of things as resources okay how will java identify each and every one of them by giving them a unique id so just like in a college or in a university everybody is given a unique number by which we identify the student okay name if i take i'll be in uh, big trouble because there are a lot of people with the same name and it will be very difficult for me to map but if i use uh, an id i give a unique id to everybody i'll be able to easily map everybody who i'm uh, monitoring so here in this case resource all resource i told you is getting converted back to java when all resources which are available which is like hundreds and thousands of resources which i have in an android studio app gets converted to java there is a way in which java maps it and understands which resource are you talking about it is through the id so you can see here r is a class layout is a subclass inside r and activity underscore main is nothing but a id so i am mapping to the one which was generated from uh, android studio okay which got converted into a java file call that file so when you run the program as soon as the program starts what you are able to see whatever is there in activity underscore main dot xml which is inside the folder called layout which is inside the resources of of your android studio project okay so this is the one which you see in front so whatever i put here also will get mapped to java later i'll talk to you about that shortly so uh, i hope this is clear to you guys this is what is already there so as soon as your app starts this is what is getting executed that is why you are able to see uh, a design so if i comment this out what will happen okay please think of this if i comment this out no view is set i'll not be able to see anything on the screen okay this is not what i want i want to see what is there in the design so if i remove that one line what i have commented right now you are not setting the contents view so nothing will be there on the screen your app is running but you'll not see anything i hope you follow right it will take memory all those things will be there but nothing will be shown to the user if i am not able to show anything to the user what is the point of that app okay so keep that in mind this is the most important line of code setting the content view once the view is been set okay uh, you cannot change it unless the entire program is called once again okay and this method will not be called every time it will only be called the first time you are opening because creation happens only once uh, i'll talk about the activity life cycle uh, in the next class but remember this will only be called once okay per life cycle that is uh, i think that is self explanatory but anyway keep this in mind let me go to the design so uh, in this program in this class all i am going to do is to try to do a simple program okay with java also in the picture okay but uh, i'm not going to go in depth of java part but uh, a basic okay a basic part of java we will we'll do a simple program like say um, i think we can do something uh, adding two numbers okay so we'll just write a program which will add two numbers and display the answer to me okay that's the simple program which we are trying to do so any program even if it is simple or a hello world or whatever it is before i start android studio uh, work it's always recommended that you plan it out 
okay let's first write the algorithm not write at least tell the algorithm because it's a simple program okay so how do i create an adding two numbers program okay please keep the words which i'm telling in mind guys i need to take two inputs from the user okay <clears throat> i'm repeating it again i need to create a calculator or not a calculator right now just say adding two numbers i want to take one number from the user another number from the user and when uh, one when he clicks on the submit button i want to display the result how much is the answer in another label or a, a toast or a message or something like that okay so this is my target how do i do this okay think of what and all controls are required on the screen think of it okay what are the controls i require on the screen number one always it's a good practice to show uh, the title of the project on the top okay in other words what this app is okay so that i'll put a small label saying uh, adding two numbers or calculator or something like that okay next i'll i'll put one text box next i'll put another text box next i'll put one button okay below that i'll put one more label but it will not show any result right now okay but when you click on submit if the numbers are there properly i should be able to give me uh, um, get me the answer and display it in that label so basically one label two text boxes one button another label this is what is my design okay let's first do the design then we'll go to the code design is going to be very simple uh, i am not going to use constraint layout just like how i we saw yesterday i'm going to use a linear layout which is one after the other i'll just put a linear layout and uh, let me just apply constraints so there's no error right now nothing is there so i've just closed everything okay so now what am i talking to i am talking to a linear layout okay which is inside a constraint layout which is what i showed you yesterday same thing okay let me just go back and uh, let's begin first i would like to put one label okay let me just first put the controls then we'll do individual properties then i want to take a number from the user right so i can take this one directly i'll take one number okay one number is not enough so let me just put one more okay i think i'll just screen um, i'll just go a little bit more closer i hope the screen is visible okay so i have one label two text boxes ready now let me put one button okay see uh, since it is linear layout it doesn't matter where you drop it okay like for example i'm going to put a label now let me put it at the bottom of the page okay so let me put it here will it stay there no it won't it will go to that part because linear layout one after the other so where you place it doesn't matter linear layout will automatically put themselves in one after other format okay i hope this is clear this is all i'm going to do now let me change the properties of the control so that i make them unique okay so just remember whenever i'm dragging and dropping basically what i'm trying to do is create an object of that class how many classes are there on my screen and how many objects are there on my screen can you guys tell me that then we'll proceed how many classes and how many objects are there on my screen three classes five objects correct okay so what are the five objects here one two three four five five objects okay what are the three classes two text views okay both are from the same class so text view is one class edit text text boxes that is one class button one class so three classes and uh, five objects are there on my screen i hope this is clear to you guys okay so let me just select all the um, controls one by one let me just zoom out a minute okay yeah so uh, let me just choose all the controls by holding control or shift okay let me just choose all the five controls and go to their properties first of all let me keep them a little bit away from each other okay they are too close so uh, let me just change the margin layout margin let me just give one 10 dp okay so they are little bit far away from each other from the border top bottom left right everything okay so i've just kept them this way now next thing what i'm going to do is uh, if you want you can give padding if you want you can give uh, increase this size also i leave it up to you guys i'll not touch anything which is common if you want to change something common select all of them then change the common properties okay it should show multiple here right so now let me just come out let me start with the first one uh, this attribute now there is an id here i think you guys can see this there is something called id typically um, when you are doing professional development every control should be named appropriately please keep this in mind guys every control must be named appropriately you cannot just put text box 1 text box 2 label 1 label 2 that's not recommended it is wrong in an industry 
in college in your laptop do whatever you want but normally uh, uh, i mean uh, inculcate that uh, habit you should not be naming your controls randomly it should be making sense okay so typically uh, i normally we i follow a general format which is followed in every uh, place commonly okay but every company will have its own way of naming the controls all right so what i will be suggesting you is in my classes what i'll be doing is first two or three letters short small letters full small letters should indicate what type of control it is okay next to word should tell what that control is doing okay this is what i normally suggest but in college in our classes you can ignore the ones which you are not manipulating by code okay i'll repeat it again please uh, remember this you have to name all the controls appropriately just to save some time i am telling you that well in our future developments i will not be naming some controls okay i'll list optionally i'll ignore them why am i ignoring them is because i am not going to use them in the program those controls i'll ignore in this five controls what you see this is the only control i am not going to programmatically change okay you know why because this is just a label and i'm displaying the type uh, the name called as calculator nothing else i'm going to do so i don't want to name this control because i'm not going to use it programmatically but if i'm doing this program for a company i have to name it what will i name it i'll put it as uh, lbl short form for uh, label or uh, here they have used uh, text view so you can put tv tv short form for text view which holds the title so i'll name it as tv title i hope you guys follow All right you need not name it but i'm just naming it for this program but in the later programs uh, please note there'll be a distinction between the controls which i'm using in program the using uh, the controls which i'll not be calling in java okay see for example this control i'll never call it in java because i'm not going to take user input here i'm not going to display the result here so i'm never going to use it so i'll not name them here okay but i have named it just for you to understand how the naming conventions will go number 1 okay so i have put an id second one what will be the height and width okay that uh, you can say match parent which means the height uh, the width will be the size size of your screen uh, height will be the size of the uh, content okay so now let me just go down i'll just remove that word text view that's the text which is written there okay so um, let me just change that text view from text view i'll name it as uh, whatever title you want to give to this particular program so i'll just say my uh, calculator simply any name you want to give uh you can just give it there okay i've just put my calculator or just put the word calculator it's your wish uh and how big should it be text appearance you can change it the font family font size anything okay i you can choose anything you guys want okay let me just write uh, a casual one okay so it looks a little bit simple and uh, if you want professional you can use professional also let me just choose a uh, bigger size okay i think large would be enough okay that was display one was fine you can see the sizes here these are all uh, inbuilt sizes available okay but prefer something which is not too big but not too small also okay that's it done one part is done if you want you can change the uh, font size and uh, the font what is available there okay you can you can choose more fonts also guys i leave it to you okay so i'll just put small cap so that it looks like this okay some anything this i leave it to you size also you can change if you want but let me just keep it as it is okay so my title is ready but you see there is a small problem that it is in the left side titles normally should be in the middle so i'll be changing a property called gravity uh, i'll just change the property there is a layout gravity as well as gravity i've changed the gravity sorry so gravity i've just changed it to center this gravity of the control okay so the text which is inside the control will be aligned inside the place now i see that it is too close to the top the top screen i can obviously change the layout or uh, the margin of this alone okay i can change the margin alone uh, of this instead of 10 dp i can say top alone you give me 20 dp okay since i have given layout margin throughout that will not work okay so now i have given a little bit space okay and say top and bottom give 20 dp i can only only give top and bottom because left and right i am not going to touch so i have only given uh, top and bottom uh, margin for my title so that is done now let me go to the next control second control okay through which i am going to take a number okay now i want you guys to notice here again uh, the text box which is displayed there i i dragged and dropped a number so uh, i'll go to the type input type you see already number is chosen which means 
my uh, Android system keyboard will not allow you to enter anything else apart from a number in this text box. Keep that in mind. Okay. Next. What is the ID? They have given edit text number. What will be the second one ID? Edit text number two. Okay. I hope you guys follow this, right? That's not right. You can't give number one, number two and all. Which here it makes sense a little bit at least. But normally when you create a bigger form, uh, every control which you use should have some meaning to it. Okay, so let me click on the first control here. I'm going to put it as um, you can put it as TXT or ET edit text short form. Okay, so let me use the word ET edit text. Okay, um, first. This is the uh, edit text which takes the first number. You can also put it as um, ET first, however you want or TXT first, but always give a name which see by looking at the name, I'll be able to understand what it is holding. I can just see that it is ET, which means edit text and first it takes the first number. Let me click on the second button or second text box. I'll say ET second, which just means uh, when it comes like this, just click on refractor guys. Don't click on preview. Okay. It's just re renaming ID called resource and its usages to this particular name. So just click on refactor. Okay. Refractor and then you'll get all these things will be modified in the R.Java also. That's what it's coming there. So I've changed the ID of these two controls. If you want to change the font, color, all those things, you can still do that by going to um, the text appearance here and you can do it. Okay. But I'm going to leave it as it is right now because there are two text boxes, simple ones. Then let me go to the button just like how I did in the last class. Uh, I'll name it also first of all. Right now it's just put button. It does not tell what it does and all those things. So what I'll be naming it as, I'll put it as BTN add. Okay. Let me refract it again. So BTN add. When you click on this, okay, BTN add, it just means that um, this button's ID has been changed into BTN add. So the first two lines or two or three words will tell me what control it is. Next part of the code control will tell me what it is doing. Okay, it is to trigger add. Some people will name it as BTN submit, BTN, uh, I mean, um, BTN go, okay, whatever you want to give. That's I leave it to you. That again is your wish. Now width and height, you see, I have already discussed this in the last class. Height is wrapping, but width is saying match parent. I'll just change it into wrap content. It will go to the left side corner. So uh, let me just go to the property called uh, layout gravity. Okay, for this, I need layout gravity and then say in the middle. In the layout, I need you to come in the middle. Here I said the in the control text should come in the middle. So I changed only gravity. Okay, I hope rem remember I will remember this. Okay, done. Next, this button's text. It's saying button. I don't want that. I should uh, be able to tell the word as uh, add numbers or I'll just put the word <coughs> add. But I want you guys to notice this here. When I make it as add and look on the top, it says wrap content. So right now it's saying button. So the size of the button takes the word button as its size. Okay. But when I change it right now to add, it's a three letter word. Look at the button size. It just shrinks a little bit. Okay. Because the size of the text what you have put is small. So the button also becomes small. It doesn't make a difference. If you want, you can make the size a little bit bigger. Okay. I'll leave it to you guys. So keep that in mind. Let me go to the next control. The last control uh, is where I wanted to display the result. Okay. So this obviously you have to name because I'm going to take this through the code. So I'll name it as TV result. Okay. Which will just change uh, or this will be the name uh, for my text view, which will be displaying the result to me. Okay, one is done. Now let me go to the next part. I'll change the text which is already there. Okay, I'll remove that word. I don't want any text view to be displayed to the user. I want the result to be displayed. Okay, right now when I removed it, please note the control became blank. Nothing is there. Okay, so uh, you should be able to understand where the control is and all those things should be there in our mind. Okay, or you can just type the word result and keep it there. Okay, but I, um, I keep it to you guys how you want to display it. Okay, all those things, I'll leave it there. Okay, now let me change the size of this also. Let me just make it into a bigger size so that you see the result there in that screen. Okay, since I've already put a text, I just need to concatenate the result to this word. The word already is there as result. I'll just change the uh, result when I'm doing the code part. Okay, that's all. So this is my result. If you want, you can also change the color, guys. I leave it to you guys. Okay, how you want to change the color. Okay, let me just keep um, a purple color, something just to show the difference. This is the result. Okay, so I've created a simple design. I hope till this you are with me. All right, so here 
let me just give a space also so right so i have the result here but it's not displaying anything right now you can always uh, enable it and disable it through code or through uh, your design itself but anyway i've done a small design which will make sure that it happens like this okay i can also change the entire look and feel of this by modifying the layout itself okay so let me just change the layout a little bit and see what happens okay i've clicked i chose the layout not the not any control i clicked on linear layout okay and i chose the gravity to be center so now if you see this is the design of my app i choose any any device for that sake okay it'll be in the middle of that device if i take a, a, a tv or let's take a tablet okay anything for that sake it will be exactly in the middle of any screen you give me and it will take the entire screen for the text boxes because you have given it like that okay and it goes on like this i hope you guys follow right so let me just go back to my um, avd this is the C. this is how it will come in my phone okay so let me just run and check whether how uh, i have designed is what i'm getting in the uh, emulator let me just check that first then we'll proceed with the code okay in the meanwhile i want you guys to remember what i said whenever there is a control which needs access or which which needs to be manipulated through code okay i want you guys to name it appropriately please don't name it as button button 1 button 2 okay that's not at all recommended okay let's go to the activity okay let's see whether uh, what i designed and what i'm getting are the same yes okay so i've got a simple calculator app uh, when i tap on this first uh, uh, text box i'm getting a numpad okay which is not um, uh, normally when i type on the text box i'll get text uh, the qrt keyboard should come but i'm only getting numbers here because i told input type equal to number second one is also a number when i go to the last one i can click click on uh, add okay but nothing is happening right now because that's where java comes into picture but i'll be able to click on the button and i should be able to see a result okay so my design is okay so far let's go to the code part okay so let me just uh, stop the program let me come back okay now uh, the by default color is always gray guys which will not be so uh, dark if you want to make it dark also we just choosing black okay just click on that small uh, button which is right next to it and choose the color if you don't like the color you can create your own color okay by giving the rgb values okay and then uh, clicking on okay okay i'll leave it to you guys how you want what and all colors you want okay you can also create your own rgb value and give it here okay just click on add and give that's all so let me just close this so i've made the uh, design part now go into the code part <clears throat> okay uh, i think i believe you guys have understood what i've told so far let me just move on to the code part uh, before i proceed to the code part uh, please bear with me for a few minutes to understand what are the ways in which i can do the coding part okay there are three ways in which you can attach or you can uh, bring java into picture or make java understand how to do this particular calculation okay now before we go to the code let's just think and tell it in words let's put it in english first before we go to the uh, code part okay what is the step which is involved when you click on add button okay let me put it in words see whether it is mapping to you first the first step as soon as the user clicks on the button okay again i'm repeating i'll change that word from as soon as i'll take i'll say if the user clicks on the button okay see the sentence what i'm making guys then we'll put it into code so please understand the sentence first if you are not able to understand what i'm telling in english obviously you will not be able to make out what i'm telling it in uh, java okay that's how we need to write code first we need to tell it to ourselves in english if it works out well when i tell it to you then we'll try it in code part okay always remember this and uh, let's begin first i am saying the sentence status as if the button is clicked okay by the way think about it if nobody is clicking on that button what will happen in my app in this particular app nothing is going to happen if you click on if you don't click on that button let's say that i opened the app i entered two numbers and i kept quiet okay nothing is going to uh, do in that app because right now also that app is doing the same thing only it is running i am able to enter some number and that's all so there is no java required here so when will when is java coming into picture here if the user clicks on that particular button so if 
the button has been clicked do something okay this is the only code in this code in this particular program <clears throat> if the user clicks on the add button okay so whatever i'm telling after this will be inside part of the if condition what about the else else don't do anything nothing's to be done so no need for else it's just a simple if okay so this is i told you in english but how do i put it in code i cannot write if but rather i can tell the button to start listening those who have worked with the servlet applet you'll remember that whenever an action happens okay there should be a reaction uh, i showed you guys in the uh, first classes you remember with the uh, .net i created a simple login page you put two buttons when you double click on the button buttons property tell, tells that if you if a click happens to that particular button call that method okay so an action happens to a particular button some reaction should be written in a block of code that block of code is normally a, a function or a method whatever it is okay so if you click on this button what should happen okay so there are three ways in which java gives you an option of attaching a listener please note the word i'm using listener what do you mean by listener uh, the one who listens to what is happening in the screen okay so when you click on uh, this particular button okay when you click on uh, a button or any control for that sake if you are performing some action on that particular control that control must be informed to listen right now you have not told anything to the button so when you click on the button nothing happens simple as that okay but at the situation where you want the button to react you should tell the button to start listening okay i tell this add button to start listening how do i tell it one i can tell that button's object okay for example the one which you see there is a button's object right now this is okay if there is one button i can tell that button to listen and then i tell um, if this button gets clicked do something imagine later i'll change this program into a uh, calculator which means add subtract multiply divide there will be four buttons okay if i write the code uh, if you click on this button do this if you click on that button do that okay if i keep giving this that will be a problem at that time i can tell attach the listener to the class not to the object attach it to the class i hope you follow what i'm saying okay i'll show that in working guys but remember what i'm saying one attach the listener to the object two attach the listener to the class and implement that uh, listener to the object okay third one attach uh, the listener through design write the block in uh, java attach it in design three ways in which java gives you i'll explain all the three in another class right now i'm going to follow only one uh, method okay i'm going to only follow one method in which i'm going to uh, attach a listener to this particular uh, button okay so is it uh, will it get over if i just click on the button and like how i did in dot net uh, i'll just get the controls name and it will automatically work no it will not happen like this guys okay there is a little bit more work why because in dot net what i showed you code also was in c sharp design also was in c sharp so pulling it was very easy i showed you guys that uh, in that class okay so if the design and the code are in the same language it's easy to pull it but if the design and the code are in different different languages there is a small extra work which will be that uh, finding or converting the control from xml to uh, java and pointing to it i told you all resources in uh, uh, in android studio will be converted or will have a unique id so you'll have to start pointing to that id that's what we'll be doing okay anyway i'll explain uh, event listening or event handling in another class but right now let's just do the program and see how java comes into picture okay so my part here in the design is done let's go to the code part okay <clears throat> now in the code part i'm going to write everything inside the on create only where uh, our, our content is done please note you cannot write anything before this okay the only thing you can write in the place where i have kept my cursor right now is the theme in case you have a light mode or dark mode or something like that that code can come here before you can show the user uh, the layout you should set the theme that's the only thing i'll write above that okay so whatever i'm going to do after the user interface is loaded should be below that set content view so whatever code right now i'm writing should be inside or outside uh, or after set content view i hope this is clear right so first thing um 
since the button is there in XML and I want to pull it in uh, Java, how do I pull it? Okay. First of all, you should know that the one which is here is a button object. Okay. So all I am going to do is I am going to create a button object in Java and map it to the one which is there in XML. Please understand what I am telling this uh, to you guys. It is very, very essential throughout this semester. Okay. Please listen. What I am saying is I want to make sure that this button reacts. Okay. How do I do that uh, here in Java? First create an object of button class. Okay. But you are not going to create a new button. You are going to map an already existing button to the code. Okay. I'll write the code in a minute, but try to understand what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. There is already a button when you dragged and dropped, you already created an object. So I cannot sit here and write button space B1 is equal to new button. When I write new button, I am creating a new button. I'm not supposed to create one. I'm just supposed to map, map what is there in the design to my code. How do I do that? Let me show a simple way. Let me just write button. Okay. So please note, as soon as I start typing, I get suggestions button. So I say uh, it belongs to a, a package called Android dot widget. I hope you are able to see that. So let me just click on that. Once you click on that, you see system automatically imports Android dot widget dot button. So I need not bother about the packages because system will take care of the packages. And by the way, if I continuously type the word button, it will not import. I'll repeat again. Okay. So let me just remove this. Let me remove this. Okay. Imagine like this. I wrote like this. I did not press enter. I pressed space. Okay. So what will happen? There's an error. The reason why it's showing an error is because uh, I've not imported the package. Okay. Because I typed it. Most of us do this. That's why I'm telling this in this class itself. Majority of my students normally had this issue because when I told nobody listened. Okay. Uh, they just typed the word fully. They will not even look up while, I, while they're typing the uh, thing on the keyboard. Okay. So when you are typing, if the system understands what you are importing, the first two, three letters, when you write itself, it should give suggestion. And when you press enter, it should import the appropriate package. Like for example, I say button, I get the button. Okay. So I can just choose which one I want and press enter. When I press that, it automatically imports the corresponding package. Please be very aware of this guys. Okay. That's one. Next one is, um, all right. Next one is to create an object name. So I need to give an object name here. How do I give an object name here? All right. So here I'll just give any name you want. Okay. Please note it is not the class name. It is rather an object name. So if it is an object name, it is in your hands. It is in your hands to give the object name. So how do I give it? Okay. So I can just give, let's say, um, I can put the other way around. I can just say add button or add BTN. Okay. I leave it to you guys. How you name it is totally up to you, but there is a small confusion. Can I give the same name as I've given in the design? I do not recommend you to do so. Okay. Do not do that uh, here. Okay. So um, please note that. And after that equal to, okay, please note it's a class, right? I'm, I'm trying to create an object. So if I type new, I'm trying to create a new button. No, I'm not trying to create a new button. Rather, I'm trying to map what is there in the design. How do I do that? Okay. There is a simple mapping code already written by Android developers. I just need to call it. Okay. So I'll just tell the name. Please remember this. This you will have to memorize. Find view by ID. That's all. Le read that sentence. You'll understand what it means also. Find view by ID. All right. I want you guys to understand what it is by just looking at that. You should be able to tell me that it is a method. M stands for method here and it has bracket. So obviously it's a method and it has camel case. And the one which is put here is an action. It's a verb. It means find something, search for something. It's an action, which I'm telling. So it cannot be a, a property. It's rather a method. Okay. So what is it doing? It is going to map. It's going to find the control, which you have put in the design using its ID. Please remember that using its ID, I'm going to find the button which you are dragged and dropped in the design by its ID. So I need to give the ID. That's all. So what is the ID? How will I get the ID? That's something which you need to remember again. Okay. This is an ID. Activity underscore main is an ID. It was inside R and layout. 
so where will i get the id of this particular control not only this control guys any control for that sake this will have a unique id all you need to do is call r capital letter r and call dot id okay id is a class which is inside r which has id of all controls which you have on your screen right now i hope you guys can see that okay you can see the suggestions what i'm getting when i put r dot id dot and you get some suggestions out of which some make sense to me okay some controls i've already given that name btn add et first et second tv result okay all these things are my um text box or uh, the controls not text box alone all are there all controls id are there and you can see the id also correspondingly what is the number okay so what type of data was that uh, method looking for it was looking for an id which is a unique number so that is there so what which button am i trying to map here btn add let me just add that done <clears throat> okay try to see whether you can understand the line which i have written here i have given so slowly here but any more all the classes i'll go fast with this okay but you should understand what i have written in that particular line first line i have just created an object okay i am not creating a new button normally when you create a class how do you create it okay so uh, normally you will write button space b1 equal to new button that's how you create a new button but when it comes to this we are not doing that okay so what we are doing here is we are trying to find the view by id all right now in the meantime i have also uh, some of you already know this some of you don't know it but i want you to understand uh, when you call a method or a, a, a property or whatever it is you should be able to use the ide properly now let me remove this once again let me start typing it okay please note uh, when i type the word find i get only one method there i also want you guys to know what is the let's read the simple documentation of this all right so find view by id is the method name you are supposed to pass me something called id which is belonging to the data type of integer and what will it return okay please remember that let me just click on quick documentation you'll be able to see a simple documentation of that particular thing okay but it will be too uh, big but i want you guys to understand what this means okay this is find view by id it overrides uh, something in class that and all we need not bother okay all you need to focus on is what are the parameters id the id to search for okay what will it return it will return a view with the given id if found or null otherwise please understand this documentation if you don't understand this documentation uh, it is difficult for you guys most of them will start memorizing the code then okay i don't want you to memorize it here but simply understand what is happening here what is view this is view this is your view now what have i told in the java code find in the view using its id what is the id of this particular button okay btn and that's the id okay but i don't know what is the number which is coming because it's asking for a number okay i hope you guys can follow that right let me type it again find view by id it's asking for a number i don't have a number i have a name called btn add so java gives you a simple way of saying find view by id call r dot id dot btn add this is the number which is uniquely assigned to this particular button so i'm just calling that button that's it now what is this this is the object which points to the button which is here in the design my work here is uh, almost done and uh, now i've got the button now anymore i can just use java to do whatever i want so what's the next step i've got the button here what's my next step if the user uh, or the button is getting clicked on so anymore i won't talk to the class i'll talk to the object anymore so the next line i'm going to write add btn dot okay there are a lot of things now what you want me to do i want you to tell as soon as the user clicks or touches the button or taps on the button i want something to happen that is an event you need to know what event is going to happen so i am going to call set set the listener which listener you want on click listener okay please look uh, we are using the word click even though it is not click on the uh, phone in a phone normally it's all touch screen but a touch screen is a different idea okay uh, but in code you still call it as click only all right so i want you to create a listener set on click listener all right i'm going to call i'm calling this method please note again it's a method it does not return anything because it's void okay it just says 
on set on click listener let's go to the documentation and see what does it take what does it return okay it registers a callback to be invoked when this view is clicked if it is not clickable it becomes clickable when you attach this method set on click listener okay when i do this okay it's expecting something to the uh, bracket Let, let's come to that later but just follow this you have told this object to start listening to an event called click okay so if you click on it what should happen okay i will not uh, go in depth of this guys this step i'm quickly going to skip all you need to do is uh, let's see what is expected there then we will tell you okay what is expected there it is saying on click listener now i am going to ask a question to you guys okay looking at the sentence which is written there on click listener the way in which it is written can you tell me whether it is a class or a method the way in which that code is written there can you tell me whether it is a class or a method on click listener it's a method i told you to note the word in which how it is written not the uh, literal meaning class brian got it correct okay it's a class not a method why is it not a method okay uh, it didn't say on click listen okay if i say on click listen then it is an action on click listener is a person i hope you follow listener is a person listening is an action get the words guys okay that's what i said you should know the grammar of uh, a noun and a verb okay on click listener is a person it's a noun it's a name of a person place or thing okay it cannot be a method so what about set on click listener that is a method why because you said set on that person that's an action listener is not an action it's a person's name okay so here even though you guys use the word class okay but it is not actually a class it's rather an interface okay but anyway you will create anyway if it's a class or an interface you will create an object using new let me just press control space okay to give me the suggestions uh, which the system will give you okay now i gave you a hint that it is not a class so there are choices there on top of you okay when i press control space i'm getting choices here i've got five choices guys okay how is it it an event it's not an event listener how is it an event okay a person who listens to uh, on click he cannot be called as a verb it's a person so it's not an event setting a listener is an event got it mohit okay fine uh, just look, read the words carefully and the way in which they have written it carefully will make it will make a difference let me just explain that once again all right so um, here you see set on click listener starts with a small letter and then cap letter comes okay this is camel case if it's following camel case obviously it is not a class okay but when you are passing something here it says okay let me just open it again you see that it says on click listener capital o capital c capital l which means it is not uh, they are not meaning it is a method they are always indicating that it is a class or an interface okay so keep that in mind let me just move on let me just press control space new after new i've given now i want you guys to notice there are five options five choices leave the boolean byte and all those things uh, i've typed new and i've given um, there are they are giving me five choices okay which one do you think i should choose i already gave you a hint it is not a class so by looking at this suggestions can you tell me which is the interface here and which is the class or uh, which one should i choose actually can you find out or can you uh, identify the interface here it is not that difficult right yes correct view dot on click listener that is the interface why is it an interface just by the i which you see here remaining all our classes okay so i'm looking for an interface here so let me just choose view dot on click listener so let me just come out i'll just type new view dot on click let me just press enter please note it will make a big code coming automatically don't get perplexed i'll explain that code in the next class but just press enter 
when you press enter it will create a small block within it okay and it will override a simple method called on click okay a method got created so whatever i write here in the place where the cursor is blinking will be called whenever you click the button i'm repeating it again okay whatever whenever you click on this particular button's object okay this method will be called on click method will be called automatically okay so this is what i wrote how did i write this big code okay it's not a big code it looks uh, four five lines but how did i write it basically i just said dot set on click listener on my button object and i type new press control space and i choose the interface which came done this is the first method second and third method i'll take in the next class it'll be simpler but i'll be taking the complicated ones first then i'll go to the simpler one because if i take the simple one first nobody will be interested in learning the complicated ones so this is the complicated one because you are attaching the listener to the single object if i have another button if i put subtract another button in my screen that button will not work that button again you have to do the same thing okay i'll explain that in the next class this class only uh, we'll see how this works okay so when you click on where the cursor is blinking line number 20 what you see uh, will be called as soon as the user clicks on the button okay so now you tell me what do you want in um, the uh, button okay when you click on the button what do you want me to do tell me in english okay <clears throat> number one take whatever the user has entered in the text box one okay take whatever he has entered in the second text box okay add them then display the result in the label which i have put this is the english version of it okay so i am repeating again take the text from the text box one take the number from the text box two uh, and add them and after you add them put that result in the result label simple as that okay so it's very simple to tell but when you're writing it the problem is that text box those two text boxes are in xml label also is in xml so how will i manipulate it here same way how you manipulated it here okay let's manipulate it quickly uh, i have two text boxes so how will i call them they are called as edit text so if it is the class name edit text is the class name please note i pressed enter so automatically that also got added here remember that okay so edit text let me create a simple object i'll just say um, first txt or uh, i'll just put first text box okay is equal to how do i find it same guys same logic if you understood this this will be simple what should i write find view by id r dot id sorry r dot id dot uh, i named it as et so if i put et you will get only two choices now you are narrowing it down okay so the first control is what i'm looking for i said et first done now this points to my text box which is here this is my text box which i am pointing to okay let me move on second one again another edit text we'll call it as second txt is equal to find view by id r dot id dot et second done okay i've taken two controls which are there on the design using their id i've pulled them to java now java is aware of these two text boxes last one let me also do that for the label because there's one more label there right so let me pull that also they are called as text view so i'll create an object called text view i'll name it as result um, label or lbl or i'll just put result label okay is equal to find view by id r dot id dot tv result that's the text view which holds the result so now in these three lines what have i done i have mapped whatever controls are there on the design onto my code that's it that's all i've done so far okay now goes the, let's now the remaining part is very very simple guys what do you want you want whatever the user has entered in the first text box as an integer okay now let's go to this uh, i am going to write simple uh, adding code which is int uh, let's say uh, a comma b comma c i think you guys know how you write right so i leave it to you guys how you want to name the variables i don't recommend this but just for simplicity i've kept a comma b comma c what is a whatever the user has entered in the first text box okay how will i get that uh, always remember whenever most who have done uh, jsp servlet will know that request dot get parameter always returns a string just like that text box the name itself tells it is edit text it is a text 
so basically whatever you enter in that is a text okay but what i want is a number okay let's go for it i'll ignore that rule first time let me just write like this i'll say first txt that's the text box say dot get text okay again i want you guys to focus on the word there what i've highlighted is a method called get text what does it return also is important it returns a class called editable okay because it is editable all right get text is a method because uh, as the na name goes it's a method first of all it is an action okay text is not a method text is a property get text is a method you guys follow i hope right so i'll say get text but that is not enough i'll say dot to string then it converts it into a string okay what about to integer it is not available okay but in java you guys already know that there is an inbuilt method uh, which allows you to parse whatever string is given into an integer okay I, i guess you guys know that already so since there is an error let me move my mouse over there and my system says that um, there are three ways in which you can fix that error number one change a to string simple you are trying to store a string in a the first choice is instead of keeping it as int change a to string first choice second it says migrate a type to string a type okay migrate this a's type to string or last one is the one which we are looking for wrap it using integer dot parse int i think most of you know what this means so i'll not explain that okay so integer dot parse int now whatever you have entered in that text box i get that i convert it into a string and i parse it into an integer and store it in a okay i know it's a big code but basically it's simple if you start writing it okay second one i'll write second txt dot get text now you might ask why don't we just take get text okay please note what a get text returns get text returns editable editable cannot be converted to integer okay so i say get text and say to, to string which is string string can be converted to integer okay so now let me just uh, wrap that using integer dot parse int done so now i have got a i have got the value of b all i need to do is calculate a plus b that is simple that you guys know done what's my next step show that result on the label okay i already have the labels uh, option here now uh, id also highlights which and all are not being used the ones which are gray right now okay have not been used really for example result label you have not used see you have not used anywhere you have assigned it but you have not used it okay but these two you have utilized it okay so where do i use it i'll call that result label and say set text okay now <clears throat> i want you guys to again focus on uh, what is coming as a suggestion there okay i want you to look at the first two only guys not everything else just the first two okay set text two choices are there number 1 it says int number 2 says character sequence okay what is character sequence a sequence of characters in other words string okay so how do you want to set the string do you want to set a resource id which i had discussed in the earlier one we'll not talk about it right now in another class i'll talk about um, the string and the translation and all those thing that time i'll talk about what is the string meaning okay but this is what you should choose not this if you choose this it is looking for an integer and if you pass a character it will throw an error okay so you have to choose the second one set text okay and you can pass now uh, a string okay since please note in the design already this word result colon is there so i'll add that also otherwise it will reset everything which is there result i'll concatenate that with c now you guys follow that i have put result concatenated that with uh, the value of c that's it our work is done okay let me run the program in the meantime i'll uh, also see what is the just look at the code guys okay it's not a um, typical way of development okay but it is a little bit e easy if you understand how java programming works this should not be an issue at all because uh, the only thing which is new here is you are not creating a new control rather you are mapping an already existing control that's the only difference we see here okay <clears throat> let's go back uh, let's see how it works or if it works first of all or if you have made a mistake or something 
okay so let me go to the calculator let me just give some numbers okay i'll give 25 and 35 and let's go to the add and see whether that button works okay all right it works how it got okay please look at it side by side this what you see the design is in xml this what i've written is in programming okay so first i mapped the button which is here in code so as soon as you click on that i have told somebody to listen okay so once they have listened it all right i have taken that and uh, once you have listened it these are the code which is getting happening from line number 22 to line number 29 these lines of code are getting executed okay so what happens in this line first line these three lines are just mapping the controls these three controls text box uh, two text boxes and this label these three lines Next uh, three lines, I am getting the value from these controls, okay? And uh, two, I am getting, one, I am setting, okay? I, I want you guys to notice the word get text, set text. That's it. So now we've got a simple calculator which has, which takes two numbers, adds that and gives you the answer. Okay? I hope you guys follow what I've done so far. Okay, so it's very simple uh, once you get the flow of it. The only thing which I want you to focus on this class is the find view by ID. Okay, if you have understood that, it should work properly. So let me just modify. You can give some other value and click on add. Get the value. Okay, so you keep changing it. All right, so it's a dynamic calculator which gives you the answer as you look for. All right, so simple. Right? Okay, I want you guys to try this on your own uh, in your the same Hello World program only to create a new project because last class we didn't do much. Okay, this program, we have just done a simple block of code. Okay, so I want you guys to try this and see uh, whether you get the flow of this. All right, so uh, the highlight of today's class would be this, guys. Uh, every control which you see on the design cannot be directly called by Java. Rather, Java has to find uh, using the ID of that control from the resources which generates the ID for each and every control. Okay, please try this, guys. If you've got the flow of this program, any other program what we have might not be such a complication for you because it's uh, it's the same logic which is getting repeated in different different scenarios okay i'll talk more about uh, the listening uh, of a button okay say same thing if i put another button here called uh, subtract okay let me just do that also quickly okay i think with that i can stop i'll just do that but you guys would now have an idea of how this would go okay so let me just uh, put another button okay but please note when I put a button here, where will it go? Okay, I'm just going to drag and drop a button and put it here. I'll put it below uh, the button, add button, but above the result button. I hope you guys can see this, right? So if you want it in the same line, you'll have to put another layout here and put these buttons into the layout. Okay, I'll not go to that. I'll do it in another class. Okay, but here I am not bothered about the layout. I'm only about the code I'm going to focus on. So let me put a second button. Here, I'm going to name this as uh, btn subtract. I'll put btn sub refractor and uh, width, let it not be match parent, let it be wrap content. And since I set the layout to be in the center, it obviously puts it in the center. And now I'll go to the text. Uh, the text I'll tell subtract. I'll not put add. Right now I put subtract. Please note this button is bigger than this because add is three words, subtract is not three words. Okay, so remember that. So two things have changed, only that much. Nothing else I'm going to modify. I leave it as it is. My work in the design is done. Now, what about the code part? Let's go to the code part. Let me minimize this so that you know that only button and add buttons listener has been written so far. Actually, it's only two lines of code. But when you open it, it looks like so many lines of code. It is, actually, it's two lines. First line, second line. And inside this, the bracket opens here, the bracket closes here. So if I close this entire thing, it's only one one line basically but we have written more okay so i have closed that let me write the next one okay by now you know how this procedure goes and how the flow goes let me just write let's create another object of button let me call it as sub btn is equal to find view by id r dot id dot you know the buttons id btn i put two buttons are coming add and subtract now i'm looking for the subtract button so i'll choose that next line same code sub btn dot set on click listener and within brackets, I'm supposed to type an object of a list interface. So I'll just press that interface. It creates this code which says on click. Okay. It's the same code what I've written. So I'm going to copy paste it. 
I'll not uh, type it again because it's not a wasting time. Okay, so remaining I'll type. So I've just taken this block of code from them. Okay, so three controls I've taken. One is the uh, text box, second text box, result. I need these, whether you are adding or subtracting, I need these. Okay, so remember that. That's why I am writing the code again and again. It is a repetition of code, I know that. Okay, to fix that is what I'm gonna tell the second solution. So first solution is just attaching it to the object itself. Okay, remember that. Now, let me create uh, int a comma, uh, b comma c. <clears throat> All right, and what is a? A's value is going to come from first text box. So I'm gonna write first txt dot get text dot to string. Okay, it's going to throw an error. Uh, I'll fix that shortly. B is equal to second text dot get text dot to string. Last one uh, is C is equal to A plus B. All right, but then there is obviously errors because these are uh, not meant to be a string. So I'll wrap them using uh, integer dot parse int. Done. So I've got A, but it's not plus B, it's minus B because subtraction, right? So last one is again simple, call the result label and say set text because other three, other two controls I'm getting the text. In this one I'm setting the text. Okay, let me keep the same word result, okay, colon, concatenate that with the value of C. Now I guess you guys know that it is not a problem if I use the same variable names uh, here. Why? Because it is inside another method, inside another interfaces object. So this will not clash with this because they are on in their own uh, local variable. These are all local variables here. They are not global. So repetition of code, fine here. All right, but this is redundancy. That's why uh, why I'm telling this is because next time when you write the code, we'll fix this redundancy, okay? That we will do in the next class. But right now I've done the subtract code also. Let me run the program. Okay, in the meanwhile, please do remember, look at the code. This is add button. This is subtract button, same code. I copy pasted most of the things, some of them I've typed. Only place where it changed is this part, minus and this part is plus. That's all. Okay, let's check whether it works. <clears throat> okay, so um, let me just put, let's say 30, then I'll put 40. Okay, I'll add them first. Okay, am I getting the answer? Yes. Okay, so let me put 300. And then I'll say subtract, not add, I get 260. Okay, so my code is working. All right, so uh, design is coming from XML, code is coming from Java, logic can be only uh, populated or programmed in Java. That's why we use Java here. All right, but design, even though you're writing in XML, gets converted back to Java again. Okay, I hope this is clear to you guys. So uh, with this, I'll stop for today, guys. If you have any questions, Okay, that's why I'm stopping early. If you have any questions, please do ask right now.